In this lesson, we'll introduce what's called order of operations. But let's start off with an example. Suppose you want to evaluate 7 minus 4 plus 2. So you can go ahead, evaluate the 7 minus 4 first, and then add 2. But someone else doing this problem might first add the 4 and the 2 and subtract that from 7. Try evaluating this expression these two different ways and see what you get. Or click down here to review subtraction. Hmm, so 7 minus 4 is 3 and then adding 2 gives you 5. And down here, 4 plus 2 is 6 and then 7 minus 6 equals 1. So evaluating this expression two different ways gives you two different answers. And that's no good. That's why in math we have what's called an order of operations. It's a standard way of doing things so that when you write down an expression, everyone will evaluate it the same way. It turns out the answer here is 5, not 1. And that's because order of operations says to perform addition and subtraction from left to right. So you should first perform this subtraction and then perform this addition. Let's see a few more examples. Try evaluating these three expressions here using the correct order of operations. Excellent! You evaluated these expressions from left to right, and here are the answers you found. So what about other operations, like multiplication and division? Well, suppose you have this expression, 24 divided by 4 divided by 2. Just like with addition and subtraction, you should also perform multiplication and division from left to right. So first, you'd evaluate 24 divided by 4, which gives you 6. Then, you have 6 divided by 2, or 3. So this expression here equals 3. Try evaluating a few more expressions with multiplication and division, working from left to right, or click over here to review these operations. Nicely done! 2 times 6 is 12, and then dividing by 3 gives you 4. And down here, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and multiplying by 5 gives you 15. Now how can you evaluate expressions that combine these operations, like this one? 3 plus 2 times 5. Well, if you work from left to right, 3 plus 2 is 5, and then multiplying by 5 gives you 25. But order of operations says this is wrong, because there's another rule you should perform all the multiplication and division operations before adding and subtracting. So first, you should evaluate 2 times 5, which equals 10. Then, you can add 3 and 10 to get 13. So this expression here actually equals 13. Yes, you should still perform these operations from left to right, but order of operations says to evaluate the multiplications and divisions first. So next, try evaluating these two expressions down here, which combine some of these operations. Excellent work! First, you divided 8 by 4 to get 2, and then 5 minus 2 equals 3. And over here, 3 times 6 is 18, and then subtracting 7 gives you 11. Next, let's look at a more complicated expression. Again, we first want to look at the multiplication and division. And this rule over here says we should perform these operations from left to right. So first up is 6 divided by 3, or 2. And then 4 times 7 is 28. Great! So now we're done with all the multiplying and dividing, and we can look at the adding and subtracting. 2 plus 28 equals 30. So it turns out that this expression here equals 30. Try another example, and if you get stuck, feel free to ask for a hint. Nicely done! That was tricky. This expression is equal to negative 10. Now let's return to a simpler expression, 3 plus 5 times 2. What if you wanted to indicate to someone that they really should add 3 and 5 before multiplying by 2? Well, there's a way to do that you'd put parentheses around the 3 plus 5. In math,
Parentheses are a way to skip to the front of the order of operations. They mean, do this part first. So, to evaluate this expression, you'd add 3 and 5 first, because they're in the parentheses, to get 8. Then, multiplying by 2 gives you 16. Next, try evaluating these expressions. 12 divided by 6 minus 3, where the 6 minus 3 is inside parentheses, and 9 minus 5 plus 1, where the 5 plus 1 is inside parentheses. Right, over here, you first evaluated what's in the parentheses. 6 minus 3, which equals 3. Then, 12 divided by 3 equals 4, which is the correct answer. And over here, first you added 5 and 1 to get 6, and then 9 minus 6 equals 3. Now, remembering all these rules for the order of operations can be tricky. One way to remember is to take the first letter of each operation, so that's P, M, D, A, S. First, you should evaluate what's in parentheses. Then, you should perform multiplication and division together from left to right. And finally, you should perform addition and subtraction from left to right. Later on, you'll learn about another operation that starts with the letter E. So the thing to remember is PEMDAS. If you remember PEMDAS, you'll know the order of operations. So try using PEMDAS to evaluate one final expression. Notice that over here, you're subtracting and multiplying inside parentheses. The same rules still apply, even inside the parentheses, so you'll want to evaluate this multiplication before subtracting. Give this a shot, and feel free to ask for a hint or two if you need them. Here we'll introduce what's called the distributive law. First, try using order of operations to correctly evaluate this expression. 4 times 2 plus 5, where the 2 plus 5 is in parentheses. Right, first you add 2 and 5 to get 7, and then you multiply by 4 to get 28. Let's look at this expression using dots. First, you added 2 and 5, so here are 2 green dots and 5 purple dots. Then, you multiplied by 4, meaning you have 4 groups of these dots. So the total number of dots here is 4 times 7, or 28. Now let's look at the green and purple dots separately. Here, we have 4 groups, each with 2 green dots. So we have 4 times 2 green dots. And over here, we have 4 groups, each with 5 purple dots. So we have 4 times 5 purple dots. That means the total number of dots here is 4 times 2, plus 4 times 5. And so we've just shown that 4 times 2 plus 5, where 2 plus 5 is in parentheses, is equal to 4 times 2 plus 4 times 5. These are two different ways of counting all the dots here. We could count all the dots at once, or we could count the green dots and purple dots separately, and then add them together. So looking at this equation, whenever you're adding two numbers in parentheses, and you multiply that sum by another number, you can use the distributive law, which says you can distribute the outside number into the parentheses, multiplying it by each number inside. So we have 4 times 2, and we're adding that to 4 times 5. Let's try another example. Here's 3 times 6 plus 4, where 6 plus 4 is in parentheses. If we distribute the 3 into this sum, we have 3 times 6 plus 3 times 4. Try evaluating these two expressions to make sure they're equal. Nicely done. 6 plus 4 is 10, times 3 is 30. And down here, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 4 is 12, and 18 plus 12 equals 30. So these two expressions are equal, and it looks like the distributive law really works. Next, try using it on this expression. 8 times 9 plus 5, where 9 plus 5 is in parentheses. And remember that this dot is another way to write the multiplication symbol. Now this expression is equal to 8 times 9 plus 8 times another number. What's this missing number? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Exactly. Distributing 8 into 9 plus 5 gives us 8 times 9 plus 8 times 5. 
and you can double check to make sure these two expressions are equal. Now remember that when you're multiplying numbers, the order doesn't matter. So let's flip the order on the left side, giving us 9 plus 5 times 8. So even if the number you're multiplying by shows up after the sum in parentheses, you can still distribute. But in this case, we'll just draw the arrows going the other way. Next, let's see if distribution still works when we're subtracting numbers inside the parentheses. So let's look at 3 times 7 minus 2. 7 minus 2 is 5 times 3 is 15. So this expression equals 15. If we evaluate this with dots, we can start with 7 and then subtract 2. And then we have three groups of these dots. So the total number of remaining dots, after we removed these dots over here, is 3 times 5, or 15. But you can also think of this as starting with all 3 times 7 dots, and then removing, or subtracting, this group of 3 times 2 dots over here. Again, leaving us with the 3 times 5 green dots. So sure enough, 3 times 7 minus 2 equals 3 times 7 minus 3 times 2. So distribution also works with subtraction. When you're taking the difference inside parentheses and then multiplying by a number, you can distribute that number into the difference. Here's another example. 4 times 8 minus 3. Distributing, we get 4 times 8 minus 4 times 3. Evaluate these two expressions, and hopefully you'll get the same result for each one. Nicely done. 8 minus 3 is 5, times 4 is 20. And 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 3 is 12, and 32 minus 12 equals 20. So the distributive law works on subtraction as well as addition. Next, let's distribute on to three terms inside parentheses. Here, we have 5 times 6 plus 5 minus 2. If we distribute, we have 5 times 6, and then we're adding 5 times 5, and then notice that we're distributing on to subtraction over here, so we should subtract 5 times 2. Go ahead and evaluate these two expressions, and make sure they give you the same result. Right, so in this top expression, 6 plus 5 is 11, and then subtracting 2 gives you 9. 5 times 9 equals 45. In the bottom expression, 5 times 6 equals 30, 5 times 5 equals 25, and 5 times 2 equals 10. 30 plus 25 is 55, and subtracting 10 gives you, once again, 45. So sure enough, these two expressions are equal. And to summarize, you can distribute multiplication onto both addition and subtraction inside parentheses. Okay, it's time to discover what happens when we multiply negative numbers. But first, let's look at an example of multiplying a negative number, like negative 3, by a positive number, like 4. Well, this means we're taking negative 3 and adding up 4 of them. So negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3. What does this sum equal? Right, this equals negative 12. So negative 3 times 4 equals negative 12. Multiplying a positive number by a negative number is just like multiplying two positive numbers, except for the minus sign. In general, a negative times a positive always results in a negative. Try another example. What's 6 times negative 9? Exactly. While 6 times 9 equals positive 54, 6 times negative 9 equals negative 54. Next, what do you think happens if we were to multiply negative 8 by 0? In other words, if you have 0 groups of negative 8, how much do you have? Exactly. Any number times 0 equals 0, even when that number is negative. Next, we'll discover what happens when you multiply one negative number by another negative number. But first, let's make sure you remember the distributive law. Suppose I'm multiplying negative 5 by 7 plus 3, where 7 plus 3 is in parentheses. Which of these expressions equals this one? 
and click down here if you'd like to review the distributive law instead. Exactly, these two expressions are equal. Whenever you add or subtract numbers inside parentheses and then multiply that sum or difference by another number, you can distribute the outside number. So we have negative 5 times 7 and we're adding that to negative 5 times 3. Let's try another example. Instead of this 3 here, suppose we have negative 7. So we have 7 plus negative 7 inside the parentheses, which equals 0. So then what does this expression equal? Right, 7 plus negative 7 equals 0 times negative 5 is still 0. Another way to evaluate this expression would be to use the distributive law again. So we have negative 5 times 7 plus negative 5 times negative 7. And this must also be equal to 0. And notice that we're multiplying two negative numbers over here. You already found that a negative times a positive is negative. So negative 5 times positive 7 equals negative 35. And that means negative 35 plus this product is equal to 0. So then what must this product, negative 5 times negative 7, be equal to in order for this equation to be true? Excellent! So in order for this to add up to 0, this product had better equal positive 35. So negative 5 times negative 7 equals positive 35. In general, multiplying two negatives together will always give you a positive. And as you found, this is a direct consequence of the distributive law. Try another example. What's negative 3 times negative 4? Right, negative 3 times negative 4 equals positive 12. Sometimes you'll hear people say that the minus signs cancel out, giving you a positive number. So to summarize, multiplying two positives gives you a positive, a negative times a positive always gives you a negative, and multiplying two negatives gives you a positive again. Let's see if you got the hang of this. Try evaluating these four expressions. Nicely done, so here are the answers you found. Okay, here's the last question. Try evaluating this expression negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 4. You can multiply these together in any order you want, but don't forget about the minus signs.